Hey everybody, it's Keith with the L1 Automotive Training Channel, and in today's video, we got a little bit of a long one, and uh, unfortunately, we have to fix another Nissan PCM, but this one's quite a bit different. Corey over at SNA Auto, awesome YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the description for his channel. Check him out and subscribe to him. He's got a 16 Nissan Rogue that um, needs a PCM. Unfortunately, he got a used PCM because there are no new ones available and the, the farther away new ones he could find are over $2,100. Uh, I might have quoted all that wrong. I don't know. I remember they were a ton of money. He said the only ones he could get and wait on were a ton of money. So he got a used PCM, attempted to program it. Um, he can't get the keys to finish, and the VIN won't change. Uh, he tried every tool he's got, everything from NERS to Autels to launches, all kinds of stuff, couldn't get it to go. Well, this is actually a pretty common problem because starting in 13, most of the Nissans that are 20-digit rolling code, which started with the Altima and by, I think, 14 or 15, the Rogue and a bunch of others, they basically became a one-time VIN write. Um, not even console will work, and we're actually going to attempt it with console, but just to show you, uh, but I'm pretty sure it's not going to go. So we need to do two things. One, the calibration in this PCM is incorrect, so it's actually for a uh, California emissions vehicle is what the actual vehicle is, but the one that it's got is just a North America 50-state legal. I believe there's a transmission difference. Um, the one that he's got is off of a 17 but the hardware is correct, so we do have to change the software and we have to do the VIN. So we are going to go through and do the VIN first, which is actually very simple. Um, it just takes some tooling and equipment, and then doing the calibration change is significantly more involved because neither of these things can you do with the Nissan Scan Tool or even do them out of the box with almost anything else. We've got to do quite a bit of editing. So to squash a bunch of the questions right off the bat, it's what am I using? Well, this is uh, GoDiag breakout box, and a bench flashing unit. So it's got a cable that outputs a bunch of B+, ignition switch, a ground, can line, all that stuff connects it to the breakout box. Um, so it allows us to use this harness to connect to the PCM to boot the, bench, the PCM up on the bench. Now, it also comes with an OBD2 cable coming out of it so we can hook our scan tool, which we're using the console VI here, and then it gives you an additional plug-in on this end to plug into the vehicle side. Now, you could... Just not use this harness that connects to the PCM and not plug it into the wall and power up the, the unit and just plug this end into the PCM or this end into the car and this end into your scan tool and then have a breakout box so you could scope each of the pins on the DLC. So that's two tools in one, really. Um, all these tools that I mentioned, I'll put links in the description. They are affiliate links, so it really helps out the channel if you click them, too. So I appreciate that. And none of them are really super expensive, except for the factory scan tool. That's quite a bit of money. Uh, no affiliate link for that one. So we're using that. And then to do the VIN change, uh, this so we can talk to the, the computer and do the flash. And then we're going to use the uh, Mini Pro EEPROM tool, one of my favorite EEPROM tools. Again, link in the description for that. So basically, the first thing we had to do was identify which EEPROM on the circuit board is the one that houses the VIN. The... SOIC8 small small chip connector. There's quite a few connection types that come with the Mini Pro. So we'll go ahead and uh, what we're going to do is actually take a look at this uh, hooked up to consult. We're going to attempt to change the the VIN number uh, with consult just to show you guys what's going on. Click start. We're going to go ahead and copy this onto our clipboard. So you can see the VIN number is incorrect, right? This is this is actually for a 17 model. Um, so we're going to go ahead and paste that in there and paste that in there. And this is where you would normally just click start. And it says the operation stop to the following for the following test conditions. Uh, Corey tried with tons of tools. It's just it's not going to work. So this is the incorrect VIN number. This is the correct VIN number. So here's how we're going to fix this. Okay, we got that saved on our desktop, uh, so that way we have a backup of this bin file. Now, if we pull up some data here, we can see this is our correct VIN, uh, and we see this is a VIN number that's in here, so we're going to go ahead and change that. All right, and in this particular um, S25A32, the VIN is only stored in one location in it, 
So we're actually going to go ahead and write this to it. Now again, make sure that you had the, the original backed up. So we're going to click uh, Program. And it says Program Successful. And we're going to turn our unit back on to boot this back up. Let's switch back over to the scan tool here. All right, so we got the not on, some, so we did get the message. Go ahead and exit off of that. Go back over to work support. Go to VIN registration, click start. And look at that, JN8AT2MV7GW152995. So that is the correct VIN. Now, our next problem is that this has the wrong flash. So it has the 7FP3 Charlie. It needs to be 6FK3 Bravo. And basically this is what it's saying. It's saying, all right, so we're going to touch save to save this operation, that this is the VIN number. We're doing a reprogramming for the engine module. It's currently got this part number. This is the vehicle. This is the VIN. Uh, this is the time and date. We'll click save. We're going to make sure we carefully read all the instructions. Click next. And it's going to say, hey, your current part number is a 23710-7FP3C, and we're going to turn it into a 23710-6FK3B. Look at that. That's correct. It's for a Rogue T32 chassis with this VIN number for the engine, and this is the other information on this, the T32 16 model year QR L1 Auto Flash. And it's going to take about 10 minutes. So we edited that there. We edited it to this, that it's got this current part number, and it's going to this one. This would not have happened. If we did not edit that CSV, when we went to go do this, if we had the file, it would have been that 6FK8 Alpha, or whatever it said on the Nissan uh, tech info website but that's not the case we made our edits so we're able to uh, flash this wrong file to the correct file even though these are not compatible vehicles so we'll go ahead and click next it's gonna check for a network connection and I'm gonna have to log into Tweedle here all right once the uh, Tweedle login comes up go ahead and select your market and then what it's doing here on the first bar is transferring the flash file from the PC to the consult VI over here. All right, so it says the re reprogramming is complete, so we're going to press next. It's going to do a system call, and it may have us do a few other things. Go back to diagnosis of one system, go back to engine. Telling us some aren't detected, we know that. Logs in, has got a bunch of codes, we know that. A couple things, we'll go over to our work support. Make sure we have our proper 299995. So we do. We'll go over to our ECU identification, and look at that, 6FK3 Bravo. So if you'll learn how to do this stuff and all kinds of other stuff, please head on over to l1training.com. We do a ton of this kind of stuff, a ton of regular flashing. If you just want to get into programming just to fix check engine lights that have software updates available, we got all that there at the website. Hundreds, over 100 hours of training currently and growing every single week. So remember, like, subscribe, comment. Leave a comment down below if you didn't like this. Tell me why you didn't like it. Um, I know I'm getting kind of bored of this desk work, ready to get out there and do some diags. So thanks, guys. We'll see you next time.